human design executives, entrepreneurs, and projectors. Where are the projectors out there? I really love your guys' design. It's very unique. You're meant to anchor in an energetic template for the rest of us to be witness to. You can tap into the way that the energy moves in a room or with a person or with a project. It's a highly useful skill for any organization to have, especially if you're in leadership, because you're tuned in to the pulse of things and can instinctively discern, is this going well? Do people feel empowered by what's happening in this project? So you guys are really uniquely positioned to understand how we need to build the world while also respecting energy and sensitivity and the things that are growing within our society. So bravo projectors, thank you for what you do for organizations and for the rest of us in this collective. Now, you don't have consistent access to your own energy. It gets depleted. It gets depleted daily. So I was teaching a class at one point and someone said, where are the projectors at? Midday naps? <laughs> Absolutely. If a midday nap is something that you feel you require or a midday separation from your work, take it because we need you to be able to be sensitive. And if your systems and wiring's all overloaded, that's going to be challenged quite a bit. The projector strategy is really interesting. It's also pretty confusing. Your guys' strategy is to be invited. Now, in a hyperactive put yourself out there kind of society, who wants to wait for an invitation? And in fact, a lot of projectors can be very frustrated with the pace of, I'm not getting invited to that leadership team meeting. I'm not getting invited to the table to state my opinions or what I think about things. So what the projector tends to do is they force their opinion in there. They force themselves to be heard. That's not in the strategy. What happens? They get rejected or they get shut down or their opinions are not fully utilized or fully heard or seen. And that can cause a lot of frustration and in fact, bitterness for that projector. Here's what you can do to invite more invitations into your life, or as I call it, your invitation quotient. We're literally going to increase your IQ. In terms of being invited, you need to be seen, valued, and understood. Now that's by the collective, everybody else needs to see value and understand you. But here's where this starts. It starts with you. In order to be invited and to increase your invitation quotient or your IQ, you have to see yourself. You have to hear yourself. You have to understand yourself and value yourself to a very large degree. So in order to build this up, commit to that. I see myself. I value myself. And I listen to myself. And I'm not going to tell anyone about it. Why is that last part important? What it's doing is it's creating a bit of mystery around you. It's creating a bit of seduction. Yep, that's an interesting word. A seduction is basically an invitation for people to hang out with your energy. There's something that she knows, we say. There's something that he knows that I need to know. But what is it? He's so mysterious. <laughs> Projectors tend to be mysterious, or at least we perceive them that way, when they're in alignment. We're literally seduced by that energy, and we want to play with it. We want to say, like, you know what? I feel like you've got some information for me. What is it? Or let's invite so-and-so, that projector, to this business meeting. She's got something to say here. So again, when you're building up your IQ in this one, Make sure that you're doing the work to see yourself, value yourself, understand yourself. Don't tell anyone about it. Keep it to yourself. You'll build up that mystery around you and you'll build up a lot of invitations to participate in things. Be sure you choose the things that are truly in line with your energy and your passions.